Rachel's face was stone cold and she didn't need to say anything. I knew I'd gone way too far this time. She started tossing my clothes out the door, each piece hitting the ground like a slap in the face. Get out, Mia. I'm done with you. Her voice cutting through me like a knife. I just stood there, paralyzed as the reality of what I'd done sank in. I'd crossed a line I never should have, and now my own sister wanted me gone. I felt like the worst person in the world, ashamed, guilty, and totally wrecked. If you're wondering how we ended up here and who this girl is, let me fill you in. I'm Mia, and that's my loving sister, Rachel. Well, she was anyway. Want to know how things got this messed up? Then keep watching Out of a Book, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. I've always been the black sheep in my family, the rotten apple in a tree full of fruity perfection. My dad's a big-time businessman, and my sister Rachel, she's always been the golden child. Aced her classes, rocked every extracurricular, but me? I never fit that mold. My mom died when I was really young, so I never even knew her. Maybe that's why I turned into such a rebel, but I don't know. So my mischief was on another level. Like, I'd sneak out at night to go skateboarding with kids who were bad news, or I'd swipe dad's credit card to buy stuff I didn't need just to fill an aching hole I couldn't name, and there was that time I accidentally dyed Rachel's hair green right before her big school dance. Dad was always disappointed, shaking his head like he couldn't believe I was his kid. And Rachel, she tried to help me. She's always telling me to get my act together. But I was a special kind of stubborn. I figured she was being perfect and wanted to rub it in my face. When Rachel moved out, it was like the brakes were off and I went full on wild. Deep down in the place I couldn't see my heart ached, I missed her. But I wasn't about to admit that. Too busy having fun. So with no one to reel me in, I crossed every line. One night, Dad was out and I figured, why not throw a party? So I invited all the bad kids, my so-called friends. The house turned into a disaster zone fast. People were trashing the furniture, making out in the corners, and a few fights even broke out. It was like a teen movie gone way wrong. Of course the neighbors called the cops, and just my luck, Dad showed up right in the middle of it. He took one look at the chaos and bellowed, Get out of my house. I don't want to see your face again. Adult it up on your own dime. Just go. And just like that, I was homeless. So I did what any desperate, newly homeless girl would do. I crashed at Rachel's place. She lives in this gorgeous apartment in the heart of New York City, which was a huge step up from our boring little town in Yonkers. Honestly, I was just happy to be in Rachel's sphere again. My sister, she kind of gets me. She said she'd help me enroll in a nearby school, which, let's be real, <laughs> school? <laughs> I couldn't care less about that. Once enrolled, however, I realized I had learned nothing. I went back to doing what I do best, causing mischief and, hooray, getting into messy relationships. I started dating guys left and right, and predictably, I got my heart stomped on by every single one. Meanwhile, Rachel's got her life beautifully together. She's got this amazing boyfriend, Ben. Their relationship is almost disgustingly perfect. She's got a killer job, a swanky apartment, dad's respect, the whole package. Compared to me, well, you know how that tracks. One day, I was seriously desperate for some cash, so I asked Rachel for money. She just rolled her eyes. I already gave you pocket money for the week, Mia. If you need more, get a part-time job. In my head, I was like, is she kidding? Who's going to do all those boring jobs? She's loaded, so why is she being so cheap? So I did what all the sneaky little sisters do. I swiped cash from her wallet and took one of her credit cards. I went on a full-on shopping spree in all the bougie places in New York City. I was living it up, spending her money like it was water, naively thinking I'd never get caught. But of course, Rachel found out and she totally lost it. She exploded. Ugh, this is exactly why no one can stand you, Mia. You're out of control. Stealing money? I'm not going to put up with your crap in my apartment anymore. You need to find somewhere else to dump your drama. Then she hit me with something I'd never expected. You know what? I've had to deal with your stupidity since we were kids. All my accomplishments, they're meaningless. Dad's always more worried about what mess you're getting into next. You always steal the spotlight with your nonsense and get away with it because you're young. And then she said it. The last thing that cut me to the core. Did you know you're the reason mom's dead? She got pregnant with you when she was too old, and the complications after your birth killed her. Every bad thing in my life is because of you. You just don't get it. Your actions have real consequences. I hate you, Mia. That's when she stormed out, leaving me totally shattered and crying. I never knew Rachel had all this bitterness toward me, and hearing it broke me. As Rachel stormed out, leaving me a mess, Ben showed up. He sat next to me all soft and sympathetic. Rachel was way too harsh on you. Instead of scolding me for stealing, he just got me. And honestly, in my state, that threw me. Something changed after that. 
I couldn't help but feel drawn to him and things started to heat up between us. A few days later, we were chilling on the couch, just talking. But the way he looked at me, it wasn't just friendly. He opened up about stuff he said he couldn't even tell Rachel. There was this tension between us and I could feel the spark. One night, Rachel was working late and it was just me and Ben. We watched an exciting movie, but by the end, we weren't really watching anything on the screen. Our shoulders touched lightly and neither of us moved away. The vibe was electric, the tension was thick, the energy was balanced on a precipice like we both knew something was going to happen. When Rachel went out of town next, predictably, it was just me and Ben. We ordered takeout, staying up late talking, and then, out of nowhere, he tucked a strand of hair behind my ear. His hand lingered, and I didn't pull back. One look was all it took, and the next thing I knew, we were kissing. Soft at first, but it felt like we'd crossed a line we couldn't uncross. So, yeah, Ben and I became a thing, sneaking around behind Rachel's back. Thrill of getting away with it just made it hotter. One afternoon, Ben had pinned me against the kitchen counter, lips barely brushing, when we heard the front door creak. We pulled apart just in time as Rachel walked in. My heart was pounding, and Ben shot me a look that said it all. This was dangerous, and we loved it. We were on the couch, things getting heated, his hands on my waist, when we heard Rachel's phone ring in the next room. We jumped apart, pretending to watch TV just as she walked in. She had no idea what she'd almost caught. That close call made it all the more electrifying. I was getting a twisted thrill out of betraying my own sister. But then, one day, I got a text from Rachel. We need to talk. When she came home, her face was stone cold. Get out of my house. I tried to play innocent. What happened now? But Rachel wasn't buying it. I know you're hooking up with Ben. She snapped at me. Who told you that? It's just a misunderstanding. She didn't even flinch. You're free to do whatever you like. You don't have to be faithful to anyone. You and Ben deserve each other. She tossed all my clothes and my bag out the door. Seeing her cry hit me harder than I had expected. And for the first time, I felt a pang of regret. Sadly, after she threw me out, I had nowhere else to go, so I went to Ben's place. When I got there, the door was open. I walked in and told him everything about Rachel, the fight, and how she kicked me out, but Ben just looked at me with disgust. I always loved Rachel. I cheated on her because of you. You're a spoiled brat who doesn't even care about her own sister. I can't stand the sight of you. Fix your own mess! His words kept deeper than anything Dad or Rachel had ever said. They were concerned about me, but Ben? He used me and then blamed me for everything. I realized I was nothing to him, and now I had no one. After everything blew up in my face, I was too ashamed to face anyone. I had nowhere to go, no place to live. So I ended up at Grand Central, spending the night huddled in a bathroom stall, feeling more lost than ever. The next morning, with no other choice, I wandered the streets, looking for a job. I went from grocery stores to restaurants, trying to find something, anything. Each rejection felt like another slap in the face, but I couldn't stop. As I stood on the sidewalk, watching people rush by, it finally hit me. I'd messed up everything. My family, my life, all because I couldn't see past my own selfishness. I'd hurt the people who cared about me the most, and now I was paying the price. But there was something in that moment, a small flame of resolve. I wasn't going to let this be the end of my story. I had to find a way back, no matter how hard. What exactly did I need to do? That part, I still didn't know.